Hello everyone, welcome to Journal Engineer. My name is Emilia and today I'm going to do my bullet journal yearly spreads for 2024. I'm really excited because I'm starting a brand new journal and probably as you do as well. And that's why we're going to make the spreads that we're gonna see through the entire year. That's why they're so important. Particularly for this video, I decided to split it in two parts because I have so much yearly spreads that the video was gonna be like one hour long, so I decided to split it in two, just in case. So in this first part, I'm going to talk more about the journal that I'm using, why I'm using this journal, basic characteristics of each journal that maybe you need to look for before starting a journal. I'm going to release also a second part of this video, but what spreads it may contain you're gonna check at the end of this video. So let's not lose more time and begin. So for this year, I'm using the Great Barrier Reef notebook of Dimbat Notebooks. I'm using Dimbats for more than four years and I've been more than happy with the quality and paper. And also, <laughs> there is another reason why I stick with Dimbats because I'm a freak, collecting the same things but in different colors. And as you can imagine, Dimbats have those series of art collection journals, so I'm really dedicated to collect them all and rule them all. <laughs> It's almost the same as I'm collecting Pokemons, so yeah. Now I'm gonna make a quick flip through of the preset pages that Dingbats have inside. Your journal may not have them or you may have other preset pages. Dingbats notebooks try to make those preset pages in order to ease more the bullet journalist, but ah, I don't find them that useful, honestly. I find them more like a waste of space. And that's why in this video you're gonna see how I deal with preset pages in each journal. So each Dingbats notebook has a specific part or natural habitat that is focused on. This time this is the blue journal so this means it's about the Great Barrier Reef and my journal starts with quick infographics about the Great Barrier Reef. On the next page we see the place where we put our name which is really convenient because if you lose your journal and if you have written your address you can have your journal mail it back to you. This happened to me actually a few years ago, so I truly recommend. So after the name tag page, the next page that we have is basic explanation of kind of bullet journal technique here or some other stuff that Ding Buts I some reason want us to know and I truly don't find the point of this one here. So we're gonna black it out. Okay, so continuing to the next page, this is another preset page of Ding Buts where probably you need to put your case, like your how you want to do your bullet. So I'm going to redraw this page as well. And the right page, which is also index because Dingbat decided to make three pages long index. I'm, I don't need that much of index. I'm not gonna use that page as well. It's funny how I just rearranged the entire journal. So the next two pages are my index page. Yes, finally, you see, I'm using one of the three index pages that Dingbats as an index page. And the right one is going to be my well-being page. And also I'm gonna have my calendar as a next page. And here we're gonna finish this first part of my yearly setup. The next part, which I'm going to release a week after this one, and if it's already released, you can find it down below in the description or in the right corner as a link. We're going to do where have I been page, where basically write all my travels, all my visited countries. Also, I'm gonna do my goals page, also why did I last page, and birthdays page, and reading page. So much pages that I truly enjoy having throughout my year. So now let's start with my name tag page and it's finally time to write my name in this brand new journal. For security purposes, of course, I'm not gonna write my address, but I'm gonna add it later. As I want to have something themed as my journal, which is sea and uh, water and it's blue, I wanted to draw something really interesting and that's why I chose the drawing the big wave which is kind of funny because this drawing here probably you know it is not a drawing actually but it's a print yes it's a print made in japan in really interesting period why i decided this particular drawing or print the short answer is because it's blue 
this drawing is really interesting because as you see it represents big wave obviously and you can see in the bow mount fuji as you probably know mount fuji is like the most known mountain in japan and symbolizes freedom and it's like the heart of japan and here the main ideas of the author was the instability of japan in this period because as you know in this time period japan closed its borders and basically cut off all connections to the world which at first was good because Japanese people were able to stand on their feet and prosper at some point but nothing is forever and at some point those closed borders actually started to hurt the Japanese economy and that's one of the things that the author wanted to represent here you see the sea that represents the borders of Japan that once it provided security and stability for this country and now it's not that the case I mean as you can see the big wave is actually going over Mount Fuji which is a symbol of instability and also you can see those kind of creepy claw like sea foam i'm going to link a video that explains everything for the curious in a nutshell if i can sum everything up i truly enjoyed this drawing because at first i thought that hmm, well it's just a big wave somebody decided to draw it and after i watched this video and i wrote and I started to read a lot about this drawing. I understood how deep meaning it has. And I was amused of this. And uh, yeah, well, that's why I decided to draw it. It's just something that reminds me just to look deeper into the things because everything is interesting. So I'm about to start coloring this drawing and I think that this is the right place to mention something that I won't show in this video, but I truly want you to know is that the first thing that you do in your art bullet journal is do a pen test page what is a pen test page this is a page in the back of the journal where you basically write with every single pen that you have it's really useful because you have to see the exact color on the page because of course sometimes colors can change depending on the page if it's more whitish if it's more yellowish probably and also you can see the bleeding or ghosting you can be prepared for your tools and inside you can see all six or seven shades of blue that I have and because of this pen test page I can choose the best shades of blue that I need for my drawing. It's really helpful, truly, it's really helpful and you should do it as well. And something else really important about the journals uh, is the GSM. So when you're choosing journal, if you haven't already chosen, of course, you need to see the GSM. This is how heavy the paper is. Well, of course, papers are not that heavy, but stacked and combined, they're heavy. And GSM is corresponding to grams per square meter. And of course, as much grams as you have, the better the paper can hold different colors. And Dick Bat's notebooks have this 100 GSM paper that I'm using right now, which holds really well watercolors and also water-based paints. Of course, it's not a watercolor paper, it's far from there. But if you want to draw more in your journal, I highly recommend to have at least 100 GSM. Six or seven years ago, I was using Moleskine, which was amazing journal, but their paper weight was around 80 GSM, which was not enough. And there was a lot of ghosting in the pages. And sometimes I needed to glue two pages in order to have nice looking spread, which is, as you can see, a bit of frustrating. Of course, there are journals that have more GSM, such as Notebook Therapy. As far as I remember, they have 130 GSM and of course they're way better for watercolors and of course the journals are way thicker when you get them. So this is something that you need to consider in advance before getting a journal. If you want to be more artsy go to bigger GSM and if you don't mind drawing that much just go with whenever you want and whenever you can afford because journals are not inexpensive. I think that this drawing took me like forever to finish. I don't know why I even use watercolors here. And as I mentioned, I need to be careful with watercolors because this is not a watercolor paper. That's why when I use watercolors, I really often use also a hairdryer in order 
for the paper to dry quicker and then the paint doesn't have a chance to soak into the page. It's kind of life hack that you can use for your journals as well. And with this we are ready with our first name tag page Woo! and the next page that I'm going to do it's going to be just a drawing page again because I need to cover that thing that thing butts got me here with the text and drawings and everything so that's why I decided to use this postcard that I bought from uh, she's kind of like abstract artist that I truly really love I was on one of her exhibitions and I bought it and it was really coherent with my entire blue team as you can see uh, but because the postcard obviously is not wide enough to cover the entire page I'm going to draw around with indigo like cover I use the paper underneath so I do not cover the other pages that are underneath <laughs> big brain time. I stick the postcard on top and I finish again the cover with one more layer and this time I'm using not water cover but my water based pen. And of course because I really like to be extra <laughs> on everything I add even more flowers. I really enjoy drawing flowers. They're really simple and they can truly lighten up your page. So here we're finishing with this page. It was really quick not something that I can talk about a lot and we're going on the next page where I'm removing my sticky notes and we're going to do our dashboard. This is one of the most satisfying pages that I do because you're gonna see I'm going to draw everything in black. I'm using archive ink for the pens which is really well for my pages because it dries really quick and it doesn't soak in that fast. However, while applying it, I need to be really careful to not cover the pages underneath because I think two years ago I covered my pages in black and it was truly awful because I was seeing them all year round. <laughs> So what am I using the dashboard page for? Well, for everything. This is a page where I use only sticky notes. I don't write directly in it. This is a page where I have some ideas, but I don't have anywhere to put them. I don't need to do them in specific week. And they're not for the monthly spreads because they're just like random ideas that I have. This is like my Pinterest board. Yes, that's a good comparison. This is like my Pinterest board where, as you can see, I am drawing different fields. And on the left field, for example, I'm going to write all the books that I want to read. Of course, later in this press, I'm going to have specifically a page for books I read, but I'm going to talk the difference when I get to this page. So here in this field are the books that I want to read. Here I have special fields for presents. This is one of my favorite fields because as you know everybody has a few close friends that when their birthday comes you truly want to surprise them with something. And this is why I keep my eye. I keep my eyes open and I keep my ears not open, not sure what are my ears, but I truly listen to my friends throughout the entire year and if somebody of them mentions something that they want, I'm just gonna write it down. I'm gonna write it down <laughs> in this field and when their birthday comes, I'm gonna have an idea what to get them and I think it's lovely. The field underneath is crafts. This is more about like do-it-yourself projects that I want to do. And on the right, you can see the field for work. Those are some kind of work ideas that I can improve, but they're, they're not that urgent. They're like just to not forget them. And of course, I have randoms for everything that is not categorized in the rest for fields. So basically, this is what the dashboard is. At the end of December, I'm going to upload a flip through of my current journal where you can see how I use my dashboard and basically how I use every single page in this yearly spread. I'm gonna talk way more than now because I can give examples and everything for these spreads and uh, yeah stay tuned for this video. <laughs> now the next pages that we're gonna do are my index page and my well-being page. They're gonna have like the same old layout so I'm going to use washi tape because I'm lazy and sometimes when I'm lazy washi tapes are my holy grail because I don't need to cover, it's not messy, it's just quick and easy and the washi tape sticks pretty well to the page. So what about my index page? I have not that much pages, usually in my index page it's more like an aesthetic thing to have, it's not something useful to be honest, but I truly like having an index like a notebook when I open my journal, it's like opening this old book with 
the index that you need to follow with your finger on which page you want to go. No, just joking. It's truly more like an uh, aesthetic thing that I try to keep in my journal. So the index page I divide in two categories, special pages and ordinary pages. The special pages are those pages as, uh, as the yearly spread and the ordinary pages are the monthly pages, basically, where I start January, where I start February. And DingBats has number pages, which is really convenient for me in order to keep the index right, because it's going to be crazy for me to count all the pages in this journal. And the well-being page is rather interesting page, something that I have in my journals for more than two years, I think. The well-being page, page about the things that make me feel good as a person. It's kind of complicated to explain, but for example, we, we have something like a local magazine that is published only because of donations. This is something that I would write in this well-being page because this is something in my local community that I'm actually supporting and this makes me feel good as a person. Also, for example, if I donate some money to the shelters around my city, this page is specifically for money related things. It's not like volunteering or other things that I'm basically donating my time and my work. This is specifically for money related things. The main idea of the well-being page is because sometimes I just forget if I'm a good person. And this is a page that I can open and see what I did for other people and what I did for myself. And let me tell you at some depressive days because everybody has bad days. It really helps. I truly enjoy this page. <laughs> and here we go to the last page that we're going to do in this part. Don't forget there is a second part of my yearly spread that probably is going to be uploaded at the time you're watching this video. So don't forget to check it out in the description. By the way, if you like this video so far, don't forget to give it a like or even subscribe to the channel. I'm not posting that often, probably once in a month. So I'm not going to spam your homepage a lot and I would truly really enjoy to have you here in the community. So the last page that we're going to do in this journal is our calendar. There are a lot of ways to do your calendar. You can do it vertical, you can do it horizontal. It's something that you need to try. You need to try different calendars to see which one works best for you. I've been doing bullet journaling for almost a decade, which means that I've been trying a lot of calendars. And this shape and layout of calendar is something that really suits me the most and that's why I stick with it for more than five years because at some point when you find something that works for you don't fix what is not broken you know <laughs> so that's why I use the same calendar all over again so my calendar is basically more of a memory calendar and not that much of a planner calendar what does this mean so I'm using my calendar as a memory where have I been in this month or what did I do like some major events and I usually write them after they pass and this is the difference and this is something that you need to choose for yourself if you want to have like more of a planner calendar to keep track on everything that is coming or you want to have something like a memory book to track what already have passed the calendar page is one of the pages that I write every single number by hand and it's, and it's something like a ritual that I have. Like I truly like to write every single day that I'm gonna live through this year. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Everything happens, but I truly hope to live all 365 days of this year. I even think that it's 366 days in this year. I need to check this probably. It's one of those years. So yeah, <laughs> crossing fingers. With this, I think that we finished the things in this video. I hoped it was not that long. In the next video that we're going to upload next week, we're going to start with our birthday page. This is a page where I write the birthdays of all my friends, so I'm not dependent on social media. I'm also gonna do my books page and how it differs with my dashboard, you're gonna check in the next video. And also I'm going to do my where have I been page where I'm going to put all my travels. Of course, my goals page, which is one of the most important pages in the entire journal. And let's not forget some chores 
pages as when did I last page and also my YouTube tracker because I truly want to find more time for my YouTube channel and to have more time with you guys and yeah let's hope for the best if you like this video don't forget to give it a like or you know even subscribe I'll be more than happy to have you here and if you will enjoy this yearly spread don't forget to check out part two see you in the next video and until then don't forget to stay on the sunny side